by creating an Upmind brand. So I've registered a new domain name with Google Domains uh, called hostbilling.co.uk. So I want to set up a new Upmind instance for my new hosting business, hostbilling.co.uk. So I'm on the website. Let's get started. Just to explain to you the different Upmind plans, we operate a freemium model. That means if you're below a certain number of clients or number of payment methods or number of provisioning configurations, and by provisioning configurations, we mean servers or domain names. So this would be one, two here is one WHM account, one, one domain provider. Um, if you're below that sort of level, we won't charge you for using Upmind. We only charge you when you grow beyond that. And on that free plan, we pretty much give you everything. What we aim to do is we want your business to be successful. So we want to give you all the tools so that you grow, because if you grow your business, then that's great for you. But also and that's the point at which we can start charging you some money. So everything we're going to show you pretty much in this series of videos is going to be based on our free plan. When we do something that's not on the free plan, I'll show you and I'll, I'll say that to you. But, but it's going to be quite far down the chain of guides at which point we hit that limit. So to get started, just click get started here and it'll take you to this sign up form. So I've registered a domain called host billing. So I'm just going to call this host billing as my organization. My name is Seb Delemos. My email is that. So now I've filled that in, it's going to send me a quick email, which I need to click to verify. I'm going to handle that on a separate screen. What that does behind the scene, because everything is on Upmind is SaaS, you don't have to run Upmind or install Upmind on any server yourself. We do it all for you. We run it on AWS. So I'm just now copying this link and I'll paste it here. And what you see here is it's now creating me my admin panel and we're now live. So this is my new Upmind account. There is a tour that I can take that runs me through things. I'm going to skip it because I'm going to show you things step by step. What Upmind does is it creates you a temporary URL. This is this PTYUJ. It's a random string. It creates you this temporary URL, which you can use to test and set things up with Upmind before you point your domain here. Um, what I want to do straight away is I want to link my own custom domain. So as you know, I've registered hostbilling.co.uk. So let's go to domain settings and then domains. Here you can see my temporary URL. So I want to add my custom domain here. Now, Upmind is designed as your client area and order system. It's not really designed as your front end website. You could, in theory, use it as your front end website. But what I'd recommend is doing something like using Upmind for clients.hostbilling.co.uk or my.hostbilling.co.uk for your front end site, which you could build yourself in WordPress or in anything else. We have widgets which you can then embed in your front end site that, for example, can do a domain availability checker. But if you are using Upmind as your main website, it doesn't, it's not really a sales site. It's like an order system and a, and a client area. So I'm going to use my.hostbilling.co.uk. I'll just check the spelling of my domain. Yes. So it asked me to add two A records. These are DNS records, which you need to add with your domain registrar or with your DNS provider. So I'm going to copy these. It's an A record. One and then I need another one. Save. Now, when you add a domain, make sure you copy the ones from this list because they might differ from the ones that I'm being shown. So, save. Once that's done, this could take 20 minutes or so to verify. As you can see, it's taking a bit of time to verify. While that does that, I'm going to go and we're going to do one more really important thing. The way Upmind does multi-currency is it ties everything back to a default brand currency. That means that if somebody pays in, for example, euros, but my brand currency is dollars, 
we're storing everything in dollars and then storing an exchange rate at the time to euros. The reason we do that is it means our reporting is then completely consistent. We've got one consistent currency at which everything is reported in. The only downside of that is that you need to define your brand currency right at the start before you start adding invoices, adding transactions, because it's not possible for us to go back later and say, actually, let's change the default brand currency that everything's set to. So to do that, you go to settings and you go to business settings. It's going to ask for an address here. So I'm just going to add my address, London, UK. And up here, you can see it's defaults to British pound here. I'm going to change this to US dollar. Now, we've added a number of currencies in this list. We can add any more if there's one that you want that we haven't yet listed here. Save. All right, now that's done. We'll go back to our domains page. Let's say this is verified yet. Not yet. So we're going to leave that for here now. We'll come back to this in the next video, but essentially this is what you need to do in order to verify and link your own domain name. Once this the DNS record is updated, which can be 20 minutes, then you can click here and you'll, you'll see an option that says make default. So when that's set to make default, then you can use my.hostbilling.co.uk as your domain name.